Welcome to Off Meta. Today we share with you our reboxing video of Blood on the Clock Tower. From tokens, character sheets, death shrouds to reminder tokens. Blood on the Clock Tower is our favorite social deduction game, and even though we had this video filmed and planned out prior to people getting their production copies, we looked through the recent Reddit and Facebook groups to find questions that we could have better covered here. So while I say this should be definitive, please do let us know if we missed anything in the comments below. In the scene you're looking at, Haley's packing up a fictional game of Clock Tower, one we pretended to run just to have something to pack away. And in case you're wondering, yes, Evil did win. With all that said, let's dive into the Travelers and Fable box, the home of the Fable characters, Travelers, Ghost Votes, and Life Status tokens. We'll start on the left side of the box and work across. Reminders for Fabled and Travelers are stored in the leftmost slot. All reminder tokens are the same size and have a purple background. Fabled characters go in the next slot and are golden to indicate their special status. Each of these change a rule or add something to the game in a certain way. You can find out more about them in the rulebooks. Next are the Traveller tokens. These are identified by their red and blue icon. They are used by players that need to leave early or arrive late, or if you have more than 15 players in your game. Although we recommend you don't run with more than 15 players for you nor your players' first few games to limit confusion and reduce the number of new things that people are trying to learn. The next two slots are where the Life tokens go. The first space is for Travellers and the second for Non-Travellers. When flipped, they look identical, but their alive status side has a golden ring around the travelers and silver around the non travelers. We also store our nighttime reminders with the traveler life tokens. These are the tiny circle reminders that you place at the side of the night sheet in the grimoire to indicate who needs to activate and in which order. Some folks store these in the token bag. There's nothing wrong with that. This is just where we find them easier to access and store. And finally, the ghost votes, one of the most important mechanics in Clock Tower. These all slot in the final segment of the Travelers and Fable box. And with that, your box is packed up and ready for storage. And with it ready for storage, Haley continues to pack up the rest of the Grimms, starting with the Death Shrouds and Box Clips. I'm not 100% sure if the bag with the demon head embroidered is a Kickstarter exclusive or not, but as it's the bag most people will see and touch, we're going to use this one as our token bag. Let's take a deep dive on what those items are. The token bag is where players find out their alignment and character at the start of a game, but when it comes to packing up and storing your grimoire, it's the home of several other items. The clips that hold the grimoire together, the death shrouds used to indicate if players are dead in your grimoire, and the four nighttime information cards. All are stored in this bag between games. This is the Kickstarter exclusive content, including a second bag. We might be using the wrong bag here, but note if you only have one bag, you should use it for the clips and so on mentioned before. You can identify the tokens for each script by the pips next to their name, or at the top of the reminder tokens. Four pips indicate experimental Kickstarter exclusives, three is for Sex and Violets, two is for Bad Moon Rising, and one is for Trouble Brewing. Once you've identified all of the experimental tokens, they are stored in the secondary bag for safekeeping. Now we get our chance to do a classic Dice Tower content drop. Nice. The token box is the most self-explanatory. Good reminders, townsfolk, outsiders, minions, demons, evil reminders. Each space is clearly marked what goes where. From outsiders such as the lunatic going into the outsider space, and for demons such as the shabalov it goes into the demon space. Simply put the token group into the space it's labelled for. If you don't know which token belongs to which group, you can refer to the character sheet to double check. You also have a secondary option here for your travellers. Each traveller is designed to work best with a script, so you can store the respective travellers in the addition box by stacking them up under the outsiders or minions, whichever you prefer. We still saw these tokens in the traveller and fable box, but wanted to show you this alternative option. Just a reminder that you stack all of the evil tokens, both minion and demon, together into the evil reminder section. and the good tokens, Townsfolk and Outsider, into the good reminder section. You have now packed away the character and token reminders and are ready to start packing the rest of the content. Now that you have everything organized, let's start packing it away. First, make sure you know which is the back of the box as this is where you'll put everything. You can tell which is the front without turning it over as the front has an extra cardboard lip that's used to keep the grimoire together during play. It's about twice as thick as the other sides, 
and acts as the spine of the grimoire and the lid of the box. The first thing you pack is the town square sheet. It fits snugly into the box. On top of that goes the grimoire stand. A few of you have asked what this is, and it's where the grimoire sits during play to give you an easy view into it during the day phase. Just make sure it's not pointed at your players. The top bit slides off and goes in first, followed by the part that folds up flat. Just to pause here for a second, as we've seen this question asked a lot, what do you do with the four sleeves? In short, you store the character sheets in them. One of them will be larger than the others, and in this sleeve you will store the rules explanation and the night sheet for each edition. In total, five sheets. You can tell them apart as they will be larger than the regular character sheets. The other three sleeves are for each edition. Yes, all 20 of the character sheets will fit into this sleeve without any issue. Et voila, your character and night sheets are now ready for storing. Next, the slightly larger night and rules explanation sheets are stored. And as you see, we tend to store the character sheets upside down, so we can easily find the right set we're going to play with next time we unpack the game. The token boxes. Now, you can store these in a couple of different ways. You should think about how you plan to store your grimoire, as the boxes do all have to be stored in the same way. Lining the token boxes up so that the long half of them are at the bottom of the box when stored will help ensure that the tokens don't move around once the grimoire is stored away. As we run the New York Blood on the Clock Tower group, we saw a couple of extra bits in our grimoire to help introduce new players, starting with name tags. We store the pens to write your name in under the addition token boxes. Then you can slide the name tags over to the edge. We picked up a roll of like 500 name tags for $5 from Amazon and they work out well. Next, we insert the token bags in the experimental tokens. This completes a nice snug grimoire box of things. We also have some pronoun stickers. And lastly, whilst we don't store the rules and edition books in the grimoire to save weight, we wanted to show you how this all fits nicely and then it closes without any gap or wiggle when the lid is on. And that's how you store your Blood on the Clock Tower grimoire. If you watch this, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and leave us a comment as it helps with the algorithm. And don't forget to check out our other great Blood on the Clock Tower content. Thank you.